Ce consider. Jesus saves. He still does. He'll make of you someone new. Cleanse the sin that was. The Holy Spirit whispers, no more must you be enslaved just believe it Jesus saves Jesus saves He still does He'll make of you someone new cleanse the sin that was Holy Spirit whispers, no more must you be enslaved, just believe it, Jesus saves. The message for today is very simple, and it is the total truth. It is the good news. It was the good news for the world back then. It still is the good news for us today and it forever will be. The good news is about a man who saves. Many of you have heard this good news before, but I'm here to remind you again that this isn't just any of your typical based on a true story movie. It is the answer for you. He is the answer for me. He is the answer for the world. He is the answer for the church today and forever. See, it is no secret that this world that we live in is a dark place. But there is a man who was sent to be the light for you and I today. This world that we live in is a place that is filled with sin. And if anything, you and I were supposed to die for our sin. But yet again, there is a man who was sent to die instead. He took our place. He took that cross. He took the lashes that you and I were supposed to take. Why? Because he loved us. And the good news is that it's already been done. He's already taken our place. He has already been crucified. He already took it for us. So nothing needs to be done no more because it's already been done. And so the good news of the man that saves is the good news of Jesus. The word for today, as you may have heard earlier through the song, is very simple. It's a great reminder, but it is also a statement and it's titled, Jesus Saves. Acts chapter 9 tells the story of a man named Saul. Now Saul breathed threats and murder against people. So Saul, he was after God's people. He, he was a criminal, but not just any criminal. He was someone that always targeted the people of Jesus. And so one day when Saul was making his way, a great light had shone around him. Not on him, it shone around him. And it says that when the, light, the great light shone around him, Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice and the voice said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And Saul then said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord responded and he said, I am Jesus. I'm the one whom you persecute. And then Saul, Saul then replied, well, actually, first of all, before he responded, he, was, he trembled. When they say that he trembled, he was shaken and he was in great shock. And then he, and he responded, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? So then when he responded, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord gave him instructions of what to do. He told him, to, he told him that he needs to arise and go. And so Saul did. But what happened is that when Saul stood up, he stood up. He stood up, he opened his eyes, but he could not see. He stood up, he could not see, he was blinded. And the only way he could go to where he was was because he was accompanied by two men. He was accompanied by men, and these were the men that guided him through. So the men had taken him to Damascus where Jesus told, where the Lord had told him to go. For three days it says that Saul could not see. Three days he could not see, he had no vision, he didn't eat nor did he drink. But the Lord had sent someone. During these three days, let's be honest, 
one day is long enough. You know, if the Lord speaks to you and you're just like, you know, when the Lord tells you to do something, for the, for the first day, if it's total quiet, if it's total silence, you start to question, you start to, start to get a bit shaken. You're like, Lord, are you really there? Is this really what you wanted me to do? But for three days, Saul could not see. He didn't eat, nor did he drink. And so the Lord had sent a man named Ananias. So Ananias is one of the disciples of the Lord. And, he, and so the Lord called him. He goes, Ananias, I need you to go to this place. And when you go to this place, you will inquire for a man, Saul of Tarsus. And when you get there, I have showed to him in a vision that you, Ananias, will come and you will touch him and he will receive his vision and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Ananias replied to, G, uh, to the Lord and he goes, um, Lord, isn't this the man that was after your people? Isn't this the man that was causing harm to your people? And the Lord responded to him and said, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine. So Ananias got up, he went to the place, he found Saul, and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then it says, Immediately there fell from Saul's eyes, were things like scales. And so Saul could see again. So then Saul got up, he had food and was strengthened. And then he went and spent time with the disciples. Saul went and spent time with the same people that he once seeked to destroy. He went and spent time with the people that he didn't like. He was like, no, as soon as he knew that you were for Jesus, if you were for the way, he'd be like, no, I'm gonna put you in prison. No, I'm gonna get something against you. You're gonna die. But now, Saul is, not, Saul is no longer doing that. He is now spending time with them. And not, it doesn't end there. It says, um, as you carry on with the next verse, it says that Saul went on to preach. He went to preach that Jesus is now the Son of God. You see, the good news that we spoke about in the beginning that Jesus saves is the same message that Saul went on to spread. Why? Because he knew and he experienced the salvation of Jesus. Yes, Saul has a past. Yes, he has a history. He was after God's people for goodness sake. But this is a true, but this is a story right here that is a true testament that Jesus truly saves. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross had wiped Saul clean. Saul was a murderer. He was a murderer for goodness sake. Can it get any worse than that for us? He was a murderer, but guess what? Jesus truly does save. The story of Paul of Saul is a true testament that Jesus saves because Saul that we are talking about is who we know today as a great apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul that went into prison with, with Silas because he was spreading the, the good news of Jesus. The same Paul, the Apostle Paul that wrote a lot of the um, books in the New Testament is who I'm talking about, is the Saul. The, the, man, the Paul that we are talking about is who you and I know as a great Apostle Paul, as a great man of God. And so I'm telling you right now that this is no fantasy or anything that should be taken lightly, but I need you to know that Jesus saves. The only reason why Paul could make it through was because of Jesus. The salvation of Jesus has no limits. In the word he says, he did not come for the righteous, but he came for the sinner. He came for you and I. If Jesus saved the murderer, Jesus will save you too. If you think that Jesus won't save you because of the things that you're doing, the things that you may be saying, or the things that we're watching, I'm telling you right now that Jesus saves. He already has paid the price. It is there for you and I. The question is, do you want it? Do you want His salvation? Do you want to be cleansed and live a life where you will journey with Jesus? Do you want that freedom of living in Jesus? Do you want the salvation? My family, i got two points for you. If you want to live in the salvation, if you want that salvation that Jesus did, first thing, you need to get to a place of surrender. It says, when the light had shone around Saul, it was so bright that he had nowhere else to go. The light was so bright, he couldn't go anywhere else. He had no, there was nothing else he could do. There was nowhere else he could go but to the ground. But to the ground, and he heard the voice of the Lord. See, my family, we need to get to a place of surrender. Because once we are there, there is no other option we have. There's no other option that we can rely on. There's no other option we can lean on but Jesus. When we get to a place of surrender, we are at our lowest, and the only one that can carry us through is Jesus. When we get to that place, we will be able to hear His voice clearly, hear the instructions that He is giving us. But first of all, we need to get to a place of surrender. Onto your knees. 
so that we can hear His voice, so that we can rely on no one else, not on you, or not on the person next to you, not on the preacher, but rely on Jesus. Because I'm telling you, family, Jesus saves. So if you want that salvation of Jesus, first you must get to a surrender, get to a place of surrender, and second, obey the voice of the Lord. See, Saul heard the voice of the Lord, and he obeyed his instructions. Although he was blind and could not see, he still got to the place that Jesus had instructed him to go to. He went to Damascus, and, and for those three days, he could not see. He, again, he didn't eat or drink, but he stayed there. And like I mentioned earlier, if we were there just for a day, it could easily have been shaken. We're like, um, Lord, where are you? I can't hear you. It's been three days. What's happening? I can't see no one. Are you sending anyone? But see, although it was quiet for Saul, the Lord was still moving. And maybe, you know, when, when, we're work, when we're walking in the will of God, sometimes it gets really quiet. Just because, it, just because it's quiet doesn't mean he's moving. See, it was quiet for Saul, but the Lord was speaking to Ananias, his disciple, to go to, the, to where Saul was so that he can receive what he needed, his, his vision back. But then see, imagine if Saul had let the fact that he could not see stop him from going to Damascus, would he have received this? No, he wouldn't have. But that is why it is important that we obey the voice of the Lord. No matter how hard it is, no matter how rough it is, someone else could be like, we. People can tell us, be like, oh, you know, they could hold our past against us. But no, you don't listen to that voice. You, voice, you listen to the voice of the Lord. Jesus does not set us up to fail, to fail. Instead, he gives us direction and instructions for us to receive that salvation and for us to be able to live in the blessing and the freedom of being called his children. Jesus saves. It's a story that we hear every Sunday. It's more than just a song. It's more than just something that we say. We, we, when we talk about Jesus, about the salvation of Jesus nowadays, we, it's so casual. But my family, it's not anything casual. It's nothing that we should take lightly because every day Jesus saves. I can say that because he's done it for me. Look, I mean, my family know that I'm looking vai but right now I'm not crying because I'm looking vai I'm crying because I know what the Lord has done for me. And I can testify and I can say that the Lord has saved me which is why I'm standing here. Jesus can save the murderer. He can save me. He can save you too. If you've already been saved, Jesus is still for you. You can always renew your relationship. Come to Jesus. Jesus saves. You know, people around could say, oh, they could hold your past against, against you. They could say this and that. But that doesn't matter. All you need to know, the most important thing that you need to know is that Jesus saves. If you want that salvation of Jesus, one, get to that place of surrender. Get on your knees. Surrender to the Lord. Surrender to Him so that you can hear Him. Hear what He's telling you to do. And so second, obey, be obedient to the voice of the Lord so we can hear the instructions and the directions He has for you and I. See, Apostle Paul went on to spread the good news that Jesus saves because it was the same person that saved him. It can't get any worse than that. But you know what? It's even, that's how great, that's how awesome Jesus is. What he did for us on the cross, when he took, those, when he took that cross, when he took those lashes that you and I were supposed to take. He was thinking of you and I. It has no limits. And guess what? The good news is that it is still available for you and I today. It was available for them back then. It is available for us today and for generations to come. And that, my friend, is the word for us this morning. Jesus saves. Is there anything that I want you to remember every day is remember that Jesus saves. We hear it all the time. We sing it all the time. But I need you to know that Jesus saves. Jesus is for you. Jesus is for me. Oh, Jesus saves. He still does. He'll make of you someone new. Cleanse the sin that was. The Holy Spirit whispers, no more must you be.
You know, family, we need the brightness of God to reveal how blinded we are sometimes. Because when we measure our walk with our own minds and our own hearts, we fail, we fall short. But it's the brightness of the glory of God that will reveal to you how blinded our eyes and our, our minds are in our daily walk and how far away we are from the Lord. And we need the anointing of God to remove the blocks that are blocking our eyes and our walk. Sometimes we try and be obedient to the Lord, but obedience cannot come before surrender. That's why we try and be obedient to God in our daily walk, but we're doing our own thing because there is no surrender. You cannot change around the methods of God. The formula of God, surrender comes first before your obedience. This man executed people, Christians. But look at how God uplifted him to be one of the best writers in the New Testament. He wrote most of the books from the heart. A changed person because he surrendered and he was obedient. I'm going to give you an opportunity this morning. You know your walk with God. Do you know your walk with God? Sometimes the family of God are worshiping and you're sitting there, sitting down, doing nothing. Sometimes you don't feel anything. Why? Somewhere in your walk, you're blinded and you need the brightness of the anointing of God to uplift you. We're going to sing again. Anna and the team, please, if we can sing that song. Come forward, please, if you have, if you need prayer. Let's pray for you this morning, our family. Come forward and we'll pray for you. Hallelujah.
for the Lord this morning. You know you walk with your Heavenly Father. You know what's in your heart. You know how close you are or how far you are from your Lord this morning. The Bible says that there is a substitute. You and I can easily be penalized for what we have done wrong. But that substitute jumps in, takes over your penalty and my penalty. And he's the one that has not only saved you, but has taken the punishment on your behalf. As you stand before him this morning, don't forget the message of God this morning. Jesus saves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mighty word this morning. As you speak into our hearts, we are reminded this morning how blinded we can be when we rely on our own wisdom, on our own hearts and our own thoughts and our own strength. But Father, we thank you this morning that we are reminded that without you, our eyes and our spiritual work will never be open so that we can see clearly what your plan is for our lives. We thank you for your word this morning. As you look within our hearts, Father, you know each and every one of us in our daily walk. We are reminded this morning, Jesus, that you are our substitute, that you have taken the penalty that was for us because of our sins and what we have done wrong. But you have taken over as a substitute in order for you to pay for that penalty. And we are reminded this morning that we have the freedom and liberty and peace within our hearts because of that grace that we have. We thank you and honor you for that. Father, we thank you and we pray for everybody that's here today. The needs that we have, please meet our needs. Bless your people this morning. Bless Anna for the word, the mighty word that we heard, for sharing the word this morning. Father, the seed that's been uh, planted in our hearts this morning, may that continue to grow so that it will bear fruit in your name and be a blessing to any anybody else that's in need of your salvation. Bless your people this morning. Bless also our families and friends that have joined us on live stream. And for anybody else that will have an opportunity to hear this message and to be reminded again that the power of your Holy Spirit touch that person's heart and lead them to your salvation so that they know that there is one only one hope and through obedience can only be achieved when we first surrender to your name. Thank you for your word this morning and we honor you and bless you in your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Thank you, family. We'll come to the end of our English service this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Anna, for the mighty word.